This is freezing. So cold. On the new Sony A7R Mark V, there are five different options when it comes to taking photos in a RAW file format. Obviously, you have the standard RAW photo, which we all know and love. That's what we call the uncompressed RAW file, but we also have compressed RAW and then three others, which is lossless large, medium, and small. But what do they all mean? What do they do? And which one should you be using? So I've come out to the Peak District. It's currently like minus two degrees. It's absolutely freezing. And I want to get some photos to try all the formats and let's see what the results are. So much warmer in here. <laughs> so this is a video that I've been asked to make and if I'm honest, it's really intrigued me since having this camera, but why? Well, mainly because the file sizes from the Sony A7R Mark V are huge. With this camera and its beastie 61 megapixel sensor, a full uncompressed RAW file comes in around about 128 to 130 megabytes each. Meaning that for a full 120 gigabyte card, you only get around about 933 RAW files on that single memory card. And obviously that 128 gigabytes will take a while to transfer to your hard drive. Everything in general just takes longer. Now with the A7R Mark V, you do have a few other options. For instance, you have the option to shoot in compressed RAW, which means that your photos come in around about 65 megabytes each. On the A7R V, you also have the option for lossless RAW, and you can shoot either, either large, medium, or small. With the large lossless files, they come in around about 70 megabytes, the medium come in around about 50, and then the small around about 40 megabytes each. So with something like the small lossless RAW files, you could take, in theory, three times the amount of photos for a single memory card, but should you? So between the five options of RAW files, the one big noticeable thing is actually the resolution. Obviously the uncompressed RAW files give you 61 megapixels because that's taking all the information off the sensor and putting it into a RAW file on your memory card. For the compressed RAW files and also the large lossless files, they are also 61 megapixels. The only two that differ is the medium lossless and the small lossless, with the medium lossless giving you around about 26 megapixels, and then the small giving you around about 15 megapixels. Obviously having a smaller resolution means that you can't print quite as large as what you could do with a 61 megapixel sensor, and you also don't have the ability to crop quite as much whilst retaining the quality. And because of the difference in megapixels, this is why we haven't really seen the lossless medium and small in other cameras such as the A7S III because the megapixel from that is only 12 and you don't really want to lose any more than what you've already got. So, so far so good and makes perfect sense. Now onto the technical stuff and if you want to read a little bit more in depth then I'll leave a link down in the description box below where you can go over to Sony's website and find out all the information you need to know about these files. But in an uncompressed RAW file format directly and specifically from the Sony A7R Mark V in all shooting modes you get a 14-bit RAW file. And it's the same situation with the lossless RAW files, but when you get over to compressed RAW, that's where things are slightly different. When shooting in compressed RAW, you'll still get 14-bit files in all shooting modes, apart from continuous shooting mode, and that'll actually only give you a 12-bit RAW file. And if you want to know the difference between 12-bit and 14-bit RAW, then 12-bit gives you 4,096 pieces of information for the red, green, and blue channels. And if you put all of that together, you get over 68 billion possibilities of color within that single RAW file. And with 14-bit RAW, you get over 16,000 pieces of information for each red, green, and blue channel. And again, put all that together, and you get over 4 trillion possibilities of color throughout that whole RAW file. So yes, obviously, a 14-bit RAW gives you more opportunity for editing than 12-bit, but 12-bit, we're talking in the billions, so regardless, you still have a massive amount of opportunity. Now, ultimately, this is the most important thing. You can talk specs all day if you want, but ultimately, it's about how the image looks. Let's start with the lossless, and between the small, medium, and large, I can't actually see any difference between any of the files, other than the resolution, obviously, and also the file size, obviously. Now, when comparing the large lossless files to the compressed and uncompressed RAW files, you do see some artifacts in the large lossless and the compressed RAW files, but the only time I actually saw these artifacts, if you could call them that, is when you zoom in a large amount and you're looking at something incredibly detailed. 
These artifacts in the images that I've taken aren't something that can easily be seen and it isn't really something I would have ever picked up on if I wasn't actually looking for them. So where do we go from here? Here are my thoughts on the whole matter. If you really, really need the 14-bit color and you need every piece of information from that sensor to make a perfect image, then obviously shoot uncompressed RAW. This will obviously give you everything you need from the sensor, but the files are huge. Also, a side note, if you've ever dealt with video when it comes to 8-bit and 10-bit, you'll know that shooting in 10-bit is actually better than 8-bit, especially when it comes to low light. So my first recommendation is if you're shooting in low light, then shoot in uncompressed RAW, or if you want, shoot in compressed RAW, but don't shoot in continuous shooting mode. But whilst I'm on that matter, just to contradict myself, a few weeks ago, I did a boxing event and the photos were shot in compressed RAW and the lighting wasn't great. I was a little bit nervous thinking, how will the photos turn out? And they actually turned out better than I expected. So compressed RAW isn't really a bad thing, but obviously that's just my opinion. To add to that, when I was looking through the link, which I mentioned a little bit earlier on, I noticed that some of the older cameras, when you were shooting in uncompressed RAW, but continuous mode, you actually shot at 12-bit RAW, not 14-bit RAW, which I wasn't aware of until today. And because I've mainly been shooting in continuous shooting mode, then obviously I've been shooting in 12-bit RAW for a lot longer than I've realized and never encountered a problem. Obviously, if you don't need the 61 megapixels for the photos you're taking, then start shooting in lossless and go down to the medium or the small files. At that point, you're just pixel binning and losing the resolution, but then why would you go out and buy a Sony A7R5 to have 61 megapixels to not use 61 megapixels? I'll let you decide that. So to answer the question, what am I gonna be shooting in from now on? Compress RAW all the way. And that's it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more content like this, then make sure you hit the subscribe button. And if you do, I'll see you right there in the next video. Take care.